Hello everyone and welcome to the Lobster Roll Series Week 5. I'm your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are going to be starting out very strong with a match between Bakahatsu and Steel Blue. For those of you unfamiliar, the Lobster Roll is a weekly 0k tournament. It's a series that's going on until someone wins, basically. It's, yeah, it's that simple. So we just kind of do this and then someone eventually gets points. And as people get points... They get better placements in a final bracket, which then determines the winner. But that won't be for another few weeks. Anyway, currently setting up for the match. All matches are best of one. So just getting all the maps. So the maps so far that have been banned are... Let's see. Is key... And it looks like we are going to be... Setting up on Fallendale. Sorry, not Mercurial. On Mercurial. Mercurial for the first time. That is... That is new. I don't think I have seen Mercurial played. Because I people just banned it out. So this is this will be interesting. The first time we've seen thus far Mercurial actually getting played on this tournament. I've gotta say, I'm actually quite excited to see that because... Mercurial... Because this map is one I haven't seen since before it was called Mercurial. It's a remake of an old map called Quicksilver. And for those of you who are familiar, that map had like damaging water and this very jump bot oriented approach. And that jump bot oriented approach didn't change. The one thing that did change from Quicksilver is it's no longer a performance hog. There aren't the super high poly trees that were there before that caused the performance to tank on this map. Thankfully. So yeah, we are going to be just setting up to that, and I am very excited. Because Steel Blue and Bakahatsu are both strong players. They've been playing... I think they've been playing this tournament every week thus far. Or just about. I mean, they're also strong players from previously. I'm just waiting what we're going to see. Again, I expect we're going to be seeing quite a bit of like, Jump Bot. Maybe Spider. But Jump Bot was always popular on this map. Or on Quicksilver, rather. There's no reason to think that it won't be popular now. I don't know if that water's damaging. One, another difference, it's subtle, but there used to be a ramp to go into the water around here and around here. That's been removed. As far as I can tell, there's no easy way of just falling into the water, so whether or not it's damaging is probably irrelevant. Except maybe for, like, commander escapes. You know, jumping your commander into the water so that other enemies can't, or other enemy units can't hit it. It's the strategy. Steel Blue going for hovers, though. And Bakahatsu going for tanks. Okay, this is not at all what I expected, but it is going to be what we have, because that's how the game works sometimes. Spakahatsu with their tanks. Oh, I should point out, there's been a patch since the last tournament, so Kodakis have been nerfed a little bit. Mainly, their speed got reduced, so it's a little hard to tell, but basically they went... They lost about, I'd say, 10-ish percent of their speed. Which makes them a little bit more manageable, but we'll see. I mean, this is going to be really the stress test for what happens when you nerf Kodachi speed just a little bit. Does it make Tank Factory useless? Does it make Tank Factory still overpowered? Or is it exactly what the Tank Factory needed to avoid being stuck as being THE Factory? And I imagine we'll be seeing more. I mean, I don't just mean this match. It's not entirely on Steel Blue and Bakahatsu, but I expect as this tournament continues, we will be seeing a lot of tank play. Just because it has been such a popular map for so long, sorry, popular factory for so long, I do expect we're going to be seeing quite a bit of it, which will be great. I mean, that's that's actually part of what tournaments are for, is to get an idea of what the game balance is at right now. Because people aren't as likely to be using weird experimental strategies, more likely it's going to be safe things that they know will work reasonably well. So if those are being used, and they work reasonably well, then but not too well, and 
not completely failing to do anything, then we know things are in a good spot. A couple of is coming in here. Daggers are not really the best call against this. Bolas are being built. Steel Blue knows exactly what to do in response. It does make things a little bit tricky in the meantime as they are trying to micro their daggers away from the Kodachis. Losing one of them to fire. Two more are damaged, but they should be okay quickly enough. Getting repaired. Very nice little quill. But the Bolas, that is the key. And they are... Is that Bolas going to find anything... Well, it's going to provide pressure. At the very least, it gets the tanks out of there. Because Kodachi's away from the situation. Dagger's coming in to help follow up. Ooh, still risky, though. But more bolts is coming in, and that should be enough to stop the Kodachi's from doing much. So that makes me think, what exactly is changing? Nothing! Surprisingly, Bakahatsu maintains the Kodachi build, despite having been shut down pretty heavily. Like, Bakuhatsu's back early raids gave him a little bit of metal, but really not that much. And we see already Steel Blue with the Recon Commander already off to the side. Bakuhatsu, on the other hand, went for the Guardian Commander. A little unusual on this map because there's this, you know, four and a half metal, actually five metal per second cluster of mexes right next to your base you can jump down to. Steel Blue going for that immediately. Bakuhatsu might go for that later. There's no clear indication that they have any plans of taking advantage of that. They're very focused on the center of the map. They want to take the center. Guess what they want to do is take the center, and then after that, they've cut the map in half. They can just take their half of the map at their leisure. Where Steel Blue, on the other hand, is trying to rapidly build up mexes, but they might be ceding center control in the process. So it comes down to timing. If Bakuatsu is able to build this up, get a few lotuses, set up defenses with units. Looks like they are going for blitzes. Not going for any ogres and minotaurs, though. But yeah, if Bakuatsu is able to get that set up, then they will be able to really take advantage of their position. Like, they'll have a great they'll have a great firebase to launch attacks from. They'll have half the map at their disposal. But Steel Blue right now has the opportunity to get at them. It's just going to be really tricky. They don't have a lot of units to work with. Like, Steel Blue gradually building up scalpels. Decent idea to use, considering the composition they're fighting. So the question then becomes, what exactly are they going to do to get rid of the Lotuses? Which is, well, Scalpel. That's what the Scalpel's for. Now, if they can stop Bakuhatsu from securing the center of the map, then that is going to be a lot. But the Bolas is about to die. And that, oh, that drone. Drones have been nerfed in what will be the next patch, but that patch hasn't dropped yet. So for now, Guardian Com drones are kind of busted, especially with Scalpel's. I mean, scalpels kill them, but that's not the point. The point is, is that the scalpel... Oh my goodness. Well, friendly fire is one thing. But more more importantly, the scalpels get distracted, and they have a very high reload time. That is where the problem lies. You can get... Ooh, if you can get scalpels to actually get the target they need, or manually target, I suppose, is the other option, it'd be fine, but yeah, that's sort of the problem. And now, Bakuhatsu continuing to just get more and more of the map... Actually, no, I should say they're continuing to secure the center, but they're not getting more and more of the map. In fact, Steel Blue is the one that's actually going around expanding. Bakuhatsu is barely taking anything. They've they've got this set of of defenses. They have a few metal extractors. They're getting the five over in the corner, but they aren't actually building things up. On the other hand, Steel Blue is taking their half of the map. It's a little risky, but Steel Blue correctly surmising that Bakuhatsu is far more concerned about taking this and securing the center than they are about raiding. And since Steel Blue is at least able to provide enough pressure with the scalpels to stop errant Kodachis from getting around the back, Bakuhatsu really doesn't have a lot of options. Also kind of curious, Steel Blue does have full radar coverage into Bakuhatsu's base. Bakuhatsu just has their commander for radar. They know what's going on inside of Steel Blue's base, but they don't... Or Steel Blue's side of the map. But they don't really have the... full knowledge of everything. Bakuhatsu's commander under some fire. It's... Not going to last long. Is that Riot Cannon? That is Riot Cannon, yeah. Scalpels would be a good choice here. Ooh. Very good choice. Baku has his commander forced to retreat back to their firebase, but they do have this firebase. That's going to be a bit of a thorn in Steel Blue's side for the remainder of the game. So far, though, Steel Blue is managing to maintain a very strong energy or sorry very strong metal infrastructure not energy infrastructure in fact that is a problem right now i don't know why they're building an agus or need just whatever 
because that, that Aegis is going to be too much energy consumption. At this point, Steel Blue kind of needs more power plants, and they are aware of that. But the Aegis... What does that eat? Ten? Nine. Nine energy per second. So yeah, Steel Blue is going to need probably... Uh, let's see, 0. 0.6 at minimum. There's 20 of them. Uh, that's 12 energy from that. Are there any other energy structures here? No. That's not great. That's that's really not like I would I would recommend building like a dozen solar plants on top of that. Because steel blue, as the energy power as the energy infrastructure goes down. Yeah, it does not. It doesn't work. The commander is providing most of, or a third of the energy infrastructure, or energy production right now. Or a quarter, rather. Yeah, that is, that's sort of the problem with wind. It's, it is finicky like that. Bakuatsu, a little less dependent on wind, having built quite a bit of a lower, has solar plant, a solar plant actually, not even that great. So both players are really at the mercy of their of their wind generators. Luckily for Steel Blue, they haven't have enough now, and the wind's picked up a bit, so they can at least rest easy in that. But yeah, this is tricky. I I don't know. I really would recommend going for a little bit more on that, though. I do like this. The Asp is coming in here more from the Aegis that was built earlier. Very clever little strategy there. Makes it that much harder for the well anything to get in for the Stingers, the Stardusts, Bakuatsu's commanders' weapons. That, oh, that's a dead Stardust. Soon to be a dead Stinger, too. Yeah, very nice quick thing from Steel Blue. This is the first time I think I've seen someone use an Aegis as an army support. Often you see Iris for that because it lets you do a big alpha strike without being detected. But that's more if you're trying to deal with range. Like if you're using a bunch of riot units, you want to, you want to defeat the range disadvantage. Ooh. Steel Blue, they are going to the southeast. They are expecting Bakuhatsu, I suppose, to actually retreat and try to counterattack. Because Steel Blue is not worried about these raids. They have a couple scalpels coming up here. The This whole area is dead, or at least up to the Stardust is dead. But if the Quill gets to the Stardust cover, they'll at least be able to stay alive. And at the same time, Steel Blue absolutely wrecking everything over to the southeast of the map. Stinger will not have a chance to even fire once more. He just should be able to rebuild, no problem. Although it itself is taking a lot of damage. The ogre's down. Kodachi and Blitz can't really get up there. Scalpels get a time to catch up, and that is a Kodachi. Might actually be able to get rid of the scalpels. But the day has been saved regardless, and Bakuhatsu has lost their southeast expansion. So for now, Steel Blue is looking very strong. Bakuhatsu was actually starting to catch up when it came to metal, but Steel Blue not letting that maintain. <laughs> Bakuatsu over swapped into Emissaries, does have actually really good thinking there, gets rid of the Stardust, opens up the southeast a little bit, but it may be too little too late. Steel Blue looks to be able to just get rid of everything Bakuatsu has built up, I mean, they have the shields as well, so they can just, I mean, I really like this, have the have the bolts at the edge of the shields. The Kodachis can't get under the shields while the bolts are attacking them. They have to fight the shield itself. Because, yeah, as it as it appears, the shield only applies if units are physically outside of the shield. I mean, whoever designed the shield system was a big fan of Star Wars Episode One because that is exactly how the shields work here. But it may not matter. I mean, the bolts are actually in the right spot to deal with that. And beautifully done. Unfortunately, the scalpels are out in the... Oh, the he, he just might not live, but it's fine. It's good. It's safe. Blitzes are still a bit of a problem, but the Aegis remains alive, and there is a backup force. Okay, backup Aegis with some support. But Bakuatsu's basically lost control over their main base. Commander over to the northwest, trying to essentially rebuild and cut off this northwest base from Steel Blue, but... I don't think Steel Blue is really worried about that. Getting two dozen daggers over to the northwest to get rid of the commander. Interesting choice. And then from there, just just press the attack. Unfortunately, the main attack has lost its Aegis. 
There is one over to the south. Looks like it's more concerned with getting rid of these lotuses, though, which is wise. I mean, the, the main base is pretty well broken. It's not going to be going down to three scalpels. So might as well just pull back, take out whatever resources you can, and then just cut off everything else. All right, Bakovac's commander over to the north. We'll be able to take out the northwest. That's a lot of invested resources into that. Same time, Lotus is trying to cut through the Aegis. Not having it. Not happening. Very nice place from the Steel Blue, just to keep it just outside the edge of the Aegis. And that will be a dead welder. Cannot get through the shields at all. That southeast is done. Northwest is also done. Steel Blue is ready. Yep. No, two dozen daggers, a couple bolses, and a flail? Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Flail for the drones. So this commander is not doing so hot. I mean, it's three shots. It's three cycles from the dagger, and the commander does have a ride cannon, so I don't expect it'll be that easy. So again, the flail makes sense. I kind of like it. Daggers will be able to take care of some of the drones as well. Question, of course, will come down to what happens with the rest of it. There is a Faraday coming up that will be a bit of a problem, and at the same time, Bakovats has managed to rebuild a bunch of their army. Like, it's worth noting that Steel Blue got a lot in, got did a lot of damage, but now they have to deal with the fact that there's a Faraday protecting Bakovats' commander. They have a bunch of units here on contain, which are not being used to attack. So a lot of Bakovats' army value is kind of idle right now. It's like 3,000 metal worth. Sorry, Steel Blues. Although Bakovats, on the other hand, also kind of idle because the commander is essentially contained. And the commander is a huge part of their expenditure right now. Still, Bakovatsu is kind of in a tight spot when it comes to unit compositions. Switching over to Minotaur to try to just punch through, but that's not going to help much. Well, at any rate, Bakovatsu is desperately trying to hold on to this northwest. I'm not sure why. This doesn't really have much strategic importance. There's only 3.4 metal per second here. And it's cut off from everything else. <laughs> trying to send reinforcements up there isn't going to do any good. The Steel Blue, really, I, I mean, they're kind of the right call here. Just leave the commander be. If anything happens, just go back and deal with it. Otherwise, use the army more effectively. Same time, though, why not just come in again with the Aegis and tear everything apart? Get rid of this fire base, because nothing's here to heal, to really build it. The caretaker's here to heal it, but that's it. Steel Blue, as before, maintaining a massive economic advantage. Bakovatsu able to at least get some reclaim, but not going to amount to much. Especially with Steel Blue fighting that same battle. Bakovatsu only coming in with a couple thousand metal worth of units over to the south side. They do have... I guess more units in a way. But again, it all comes down to the Aegises being quite the force multiplier. Stopping that first Ogre strike, not a bad choice. Although, unfortunately, the rest of the units are able to get under the first Aegis. Still, the Ogre does go down. The second Aegis remains alive. And there is still a mace. Ooh, very, very effective mace at that. Along with the Scalpel, pushing back about his forces back. While at the same time, there's another support Aegis along with the daggers coming in here. Ooh, nice use of... Nice use of control move. Keeping all the units at roughly the same speed so the Aegis doesn't fall behind. I just hold control and send an order, and that's exactly how it works. So well done. I don't know, really... Really well played there, Steel Blue. I like it. And it's the one time I won't get on someone's case for line move, because... In that case, it makes a lot more sense to be using point move. Just stay under the shield in formation. Actually, alt. If you do control alt move, then you'd have maintain formation. Which appears to be exactly what Bakuatsu has done, in fact. Sorry, what Steel Blue has done at Bakuatsu. In fact, what Steel Blue has done. Yeah, this e these Aegises are being remarkably effective. Steel Blue, that's, been, that's the game winning unit. That's the MVP right there. Is Aegis. Steel Blue has taken the southeast. They've taken they've lost the northwest, though. 
Bakwats is starting to take that gradually, but really Steel Blue might be able to take out Bakwats' main base, and from there it won't be a whole lot more time left for Steel Blue's for Bakwats' commander. Steel Blue. Yeah, they're doing fine when it comes to building up stuff. They got loads of reclaim to work with. Like 2,000 metal worth of reclaim, which they are taking quite effectively. So yeah, Steel Blue just kind of setting up. And getting a Leco too, because why not have that little bit of extra firepower from the sky? Probably just take out the factory. So yeah, Bakuats unfortunately doesn't have a whole lot of army to work with. Doesn't have a lot of metal. Tanks probably have a hard time getting through the Aegis. Because, I mean, you kind of have to get in and under. Though then again, tank kills are pretty fast, so I think it's more just that that alpha strike advantage. It's bad that there's a lot of units that you know have to reload, and they can't really get through the shield before the reload happens. By the time we get through the shield, a bunch of them have already died, and those that haven't died are just well, they're they're not they're reloading. Waiting, it's just not quite as effective. Oh, well, that's another one of using a Leco, yeah. And here come the daggers. Oof. Unfortunately, unfortunately for them, Kodachi's do a splash damage, so it's not great. But here it looks like it will be the death blow coming in for Bakuatsu's commander. Same time, the main base is getting attacked. Not even with shields, just all the shields of Bakuatsu's commander. Positioned just perfectly to maximize the range. And that's Bakuatsu's commander down. The remaining defenses should not last very long. And Bakuatsu throws in the towel. That is the first game of Lobster Roll Week 5. Steel Blue taking it. Nicely done. So that will be that'll be the first match. I think we have we might have another one that we can jump to. Let's see what there is. Let's see, Boat on Your Fruity was finished already. Okay, so we have two matches. We're probably going to end pretty soon. Let's go with Bloa and Madcraft, see what they've been up to. Yeah, I was pretty impressed. Good use of Aegis. Very intelligent use of Aegis. I like it. Yeah. Anyway, we are on Frosty Co. for this one. And it is going to be quick. It's about 20 minutes that, that game has gone. Can they even do anything? I think my camera controls got screwed. Ah, there we go. Spider B Cloak Eek, Madcraft, and Blow us, splitting that pretty well evenly and not. Any advantage going either way? Looks like not really no. Madcraft having switched up to ooh. Triple shield. There, two, three pad shield. Push that on top. Shield balls coming in on both sides. Thugs over the eastern side of the map, western side of the map. Mostly spider assault, which Blow is actually using to great effect. Please come around the back, taking care of all of the wind generators. Redbacks as well for extra support. Finally goes down, but that is a huge blow to Madcraft. Blow up with the deck coming advantage might just be able to turn that into a real win. The right side of the map is the one that's really important, though. That's where Madcraft has built everything up. Lola gradually setting up there. Iris is coming in to try to provide a little extra support. But that Alva Strike advantage provided by the Iris is not going to be enough. They go down. The rest of the shield units able to come in and look like blow it. There's the two plates for the shield factory. The Madcraft is losing the shield factory. Still have Cloakie, still have Gunship. There's no easy way for Blowa to get in. But that is another big blow for Madcraft. 
below us setting up rovers with a plate. Possibly Mass Scorcher is considering, but... Oh, no, Mass Scorcher Badger. Actually, I'm not entirely sure I'd recommend going for that. All the... I think there's a lot of rough terrain here now. I don't even know if the vehicles can cross it anymore. Still, though, panel's doing the job to take care of what's going on on the side. Ah, Scorch is going around the side. That's not been heavily damaged. Clever. But yeah, this, this front is bots only. It's... Yeah, it's pretty cratered. I don't, I don't see... I don't think vehicles can go through here, actually. No, they, there's a lot of purple. They could, they could kind of make it through. Ooh, Madcraft with a couple of glaives supported by Nimbuses. Not a bad approach to provide some rating on Blow, and Madcraft actually, thanks to that and a... Wow, Mountain of Overdrive. They are going to be quite ahead, actually, when it comes to their economy. Got loads of reclaim, loads of overdrive. Quite a few mechs as well. Below having lost a lot of all of them and not able to get rid of these glaives, nothing in the back has actually been able to take care of the glaives. The fusion line goes down. That could be it. Madcraft could turn this entire game around. Bit of a blow when they lost the shieldbot factory, but it doesn't appear to have led them that much worse for the wear. Fusion Raptor does go down. Blow up. Taking a huge loss when it comes to energy and Madcraft going for the kill. Nimbus is coming in over the left with bandits. Same time, massive force of bandits and glaives over to the right. This this might just be too much pressure. And that is indeed Bloa throws in the towel right as we jump in. Glad to see both players did take advantage of both sides of the map, though. Because it's a big map and you gotta expand everywhere. I'm curious how much... Oh, not a lot of access. Wow, really? That's that's really good. Very low access in both, both players. People are learning! Hooray! Alright, so with that, I think... Uh, that is it. Yeah, that that is it for the winner. That is it for the... Oops. Winner's quarterfinals. Oh, sorry, that's Winner's Round 16, not quarterfinals. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. No, I was right the first time. It is Winner's Quarterfinals. Challenge just has weird naming conventions for his brackets. So, yeah, Winner's Quarterfinals is done. Moving on to Winner's Semifinals. And I think... I think we'll take a short break right now and then have the Winner's Semis and Finals up next, so stay tuned.